Hello, friends, and welcome to Week 6, Lecture 2. Week 6, Lecture 1 was an introduction to political parties, the definition of a party, uh, how parties work, and some other general characteristics using American parties as an example and as a reminder for what you learned in Political Science 1101, American Government. Now we turn to Week 6, Lecture 2, Parties and Comparative Politics, which is more specifically oriented towards our course and the trajectory of what we've been learning this semester. Okay, Political Parties and Comparative Politics. What we want to talk about is, again, the definitions uh, of a party and the aspects of a party, what does a party actually do, how is a party organized, and finally, the different types of, of party arrangements very quickly. What you'll need to do, as in every case, is to read the textbook, read the lecture notes, and you should be doing all those in advance of this uh, typically uh, brief lecture, but you should engage in those uh, reading habits uh, to do the best you can in this class. Okay, what is a political party? A political party is an organization that attempts to organize so that they may place their party members in office, in positions of the government. And there are several types of parties. Competitive parties, usually in a democratic system, you have various parties but they all have a shared commitment to democratic values, democratic institutions, democratic uh, elections. There's sometimes what we call anti-government, anti-regime. And by anti-government, we mean against the existing government in any country. For example, in Russia today, where uh, the, in the history of the predecessor to Russia, the Soviet Union, parties were banned. There was only one party because it was, and that was the Communist Party, um, we, after the Berlin Wall fell, after 1991, Russia became democratic, and now uh, the trajectory, to speak of trajectories, is moving back towards a centralized party. In fact, the same party has been in power, and either Vladimir Putin or one of uh, his close associates has dominated party for the better part of two decades. But there are opposition parties. They're what we call the anti-regime, anti-reigning uh, government parties. They're challenging. It's called the Liberal Democratic Party, for example, in Russia today, which is the most serious opposition to uh, Putin's party. And this is a very, uh, very important movement. That party is greatly repressed. Some of its leadership has been poisoned uh, or damaged or injured or killed in some ca a few cases. Uh, perhaps not just a few, but uh, uh, there are some prominent cases of that. And then uh, there are parties that want to simply control the other parties that control the government. We call those monopolizing parties. Um, some other types of parties we call uh, particularistic parties. Uh, these are parties that look for how they can control typically a section of the uh, population. Usually, it's a particular social group or uh, ethnic group. Sometimes, it, and and they try to mobilize that particular group based on ethnicity, based on a common characteristic. Uh, but uh, uh, there are also other parties that just pick up everyone else. We call those catch-all parties. <laughs> that they uh, that uh, food, uh, political ideas of a group of people uh, or uh, typically very small political movements that have no particular uh, appeal, no basis for any possible electoral success will combine with other parties. Uh, both uh, lecture one and this lecture talks about the functions of parties. When it comes in an international realm, we usually talk about uh, the functions being political recruitment. You try, if you want to win an election, you try to have, try to have the best candidates possible, uh, the best candidate that is um, that can win the election. Uh, and a candidate who has the prospect of having broad support. Also, as a party, you try to have a set of policies that you want to enact uh, at once you are elected. And you, we call these, this in America a platform, uh, but in um, 
In an international sense, we talk about it in different ways. Interest aggregation, uh, which uh, political parties use an idea or set of ideas to bring voters into their party to support their candidates. Also, parties in an international context have uh, party conventions where they bring their uh, membership, their party members together to try to promote their ideas, to train them into poli in, uh, in politics, political organization, that sort of thing, so they can also uh, more easily win an election. Parties in an international context are much more important in the lives of individual citizens than they are in the lives of the typical American. The allegiance to the party is also much greater in an international context than it is in America. Uh, there is a great deal uh, in the uh, study notes, the lecture notes, and in the textbook about party platforms. I would urge you to take a look at that. They have very, uh, very important components that you should know, and uh, these are things that are perennial, are always around. And so, uh, the, the platform and the platform, uh, the gathering sometimes yearly, sometimes even more often than that, to write the platform, to change platforms, is very important. Uh, parties become an important part of how people think about their world and their community and even family members. So the idea of political socialization is very important, and we've talked about that. Let's talk for a moment about political organization and party organization. Uh, who joins a party? There are... Uh, and why do people join a party? There are a number of different aspects of this. Uh, the party electorate is part of that. It's usually uh, why people identify and support a particular party. Some people just have grown up and, and love a particular party. Let's say if you're in the in India in the BJP party, that's been the party of your great grandparents, your parents, uh, everybody you've known, your friends. You sort of naturally do that. Uh, because you are a partisan of that party. Um, also, parties' memberships can be predicted because, uh, to some degree, because people tend to join the same parties, particularly like in a region. But also, so, there, so there's a, a stable party alignment. On the other hand, there's what we call realignment. Things change in a country, uh, and uh, the citizens change their political party affiliation over time. Also, they're a group of the electorate that change their vote. We call that swing votes. Uh, we have that in America. And most countries have that have democratic systems have a swing vote. They have a group of people who may vote with the majority party or with the minority party or may split their vote. And when and in very close elections, a swing vote can make the difference between who gets elected and who doesn't. And so while we have the people who um, have preference in a particular party uh, based on that political party's ideas, uh, they may realign, but also the parties themselves uh, may realign that people in a particular party uh, may join other parties. In the American context, one of the most famous, example, uh, uh, famous examples is the Whig Party, W-H-I-G. Uh, the Whig Party has gone away, but it was one of the two dominant parties in part of the 19th century. In fact, somebody should somebody should have a contest. If there's a living Whig uh, party member, uh, they should win a prize in America. There are no um, Whigs left. The Whig Party has faded away. Uh, but uh, it's a sign of where people who are part of one party align themselves with another party, and essentially what happens then is the old party fades away. There's also the issue of party membership. Uh, parties often have requirements. Uh, you've got to attend the annual platform convention. You've got to buy um, uh, a party ball cap and uh, go to the yearly Christmas party. I, and I'm joking a little bit, but not, not too much. Uh, Parties don't immediately accept membership in some countries. Their, their requirements, the obligations, the connectivity between the party and the citizen is greater than in the United States. So please keep that in mind. Uh, almost all parties, like in the United States, have headquarters. They have 
uh, sort of regional headquarters. They have all kinds of associations. Uh, there's also uh, the party uh, as the legislature. The people the party cho chooses are those people who represent the party in the legislature, also the party in the executive. Um, and uh, also there's this notion, the uh, next idea really is party systems. There are different kinds of parties. There's a one party system, uh, uh, like in like in the Soviet, like in, in the former Soviet Union and in Russia today, uh, where there is no dissent. You join, uh, particularly uh, in communist systems, there is only one party. Uh, Mexico was dominated by a particular party, the PRI, the Institutional Revolutionary Party, for most of its existence until fairly recently. Recently, and now we have a more, compart uh, more compatible system. Uh, there are two party systems. Uh, and there are multiple party systems. All of these uh, are deserving of your attention, and, and that's what makes studying comparative politics so interesting is that parties really are very different. But parties play a central function, especially in democratic countries. But on the other hand, they also serve a function in authoritarian or totalitarian systems. Even totalitarian systems have political parties um, typically a political party that dominates. China, our largest um, uh, country in the world, China has a communist political party that dominates all aspects of politics in that country. And they use the term party because it is the basis of a political organization and ideological alignment. Even though in reality, in a place like China, the citizens have very little of a role uh, in shaping policy. Some countries also, on the other extreme, have many, many parties. Um, and some of these, like Italy, has a party for about every political cause you can think of. And uh, uh, it's very hard for those parties uh, to come together to form a government and very hard for them to stay together. There's a great deal more on this in the textbook and in the lecture notes. And welcome to the exciting world of political parties.